Hey everyone, Taylor Smith, Senior Product Manager for Cloud Code Security, part of Prisma Cloud. And I'm gonna talk about our latest launch, Software Composition Analysis. And I'm very excited about this launch. It's about finding vulnerabilities in code throughout the development lifecycle and getting them fixed. So when we talk about software composition analysis, it's really about detecting vulnerabilities in open source packages and their dependencies using a combination of open source and proprietary databases. We embed these findings and service them throughout the development lifecycle in developer tools that are already in use. We're able to generate a comprehensive software bill of materials so you know exactly what components are in your applications. And it's infrastructure aware. So this is really where we're taking traditional SCA a step further and making it so when there's infrastructure components that call on uh, containers, we're able to detect those vulnerabilities. And we're going to extend this further and make the combination of infrastructure as code and software composition analysis a really uh, powerful tool combination that will help you prioritize uh, issues to tackle. And then finally, we detect those license compliance issues at, as early as in the development phase throughout the entire life cycle. And all of this is part of our CNAP offering. Uh, and so this is really important. As I go through the demo and talk about all the different components, you'll see that it really flows all the way from code to cloud with full protection, full visibility into the vulnerabilities you have and protection for those uh, vulnerabilities that aren't patched or zero days. So with that, let me jump into it. First, I'm gonna shift all the way to the left and look at what it looks like to, if I'm a developer. Now, all these statements at the top are importing open source code that's doing what I would like to do, uh, but it's pre-configured, pre-coded, so I don't have to go through and reinvent the wheel, I can write it myself. In fact, today, most code, base, uh, code bases are a majority open source. And so that means that when you look at the amount of code at the end of the day that's compiled and, and turned into a container image or a binary, most of it is open source. And so that is the attack service we're trying to secure here. And I'm going through and I'm adding, let's say I've added this Morgan package. So I do an npm install Morgan at, and let's just do 1.1 1 .1, and I want to lock it in to an exact version. Now what that's going to do is it's going to install the dependency Morgan and it's also going to include it in the package.json. So now when I scan that package.json, you can see Morgan has been added and now Chekhov has already identified there's a critical vulnerability in the Morgan version 1.0.0 package. So now I've, I've seen that, I know what I need to upgrade to, I know I shouldn't be using this package, but let's say I do it anyway, and I go to commit. And I add this package. And then we'll publish this. And then we head over into GitHub, and we can see I've got my branch ready to open up a pull request. With the changes made. And right away, you'll see the Prisma Cloud app for GitHub will start scanning the change and see if there are any vulnerabilities or misconfigurations introduced. And then they'll flag them and they'll also block any vulnerabilities based on the thresholds I set. And right now you can see that Morgan vulnerability was highlighted right here. I have that critical vulnerability and it tells me the version it was fixed in. So I know what I need to bump it to in order to get it fixed. And this will block the build from, uh, from resuming if I wanted to. Now, if I open up the details tab, that's gonna bring me into Prisma Cloud, into the projects page, into the branch, where those findings will be. And from here, I can click on this and 
and fix the bump the issue, uh, bump the version up. Now I can go to the view master and I can see all the different vulnerabilities that are in there that weren't just introduced uh, by me. You can see in all in the yarn.lock file, all the different vulnerabilities there. Now there are a few other things I want to point out here. If you for each of these findings, we have the CVE, and some of these will be coming from our Prisma research team. Uh, so they're pre-filled IDs that you wouldn't find in a public database like this one. All of them we have a bump fix that we have a bump fix for. You can select and do fix, and this will open up a pull request to fix the issue. And then it also includes risk factors like complexity. Uh, if it has a fix, if it's a DOS, if it's a DOS vulnerability or uh, RSC. And then it also tells you if the vulnerability was in the root package, or in this case, you can see it was in a transitive dependency. So it's not the root package, but the package that the root package depends on. And then we have a lot more information over here about the vulnerability and the package itself. Now, I want to jump over from this to the supply chain page. You'll notice that we're using the same data model for both infrastructure as code as well as open source packages. And so you'll see the representation of uh, Terraform here as well as uh, application code in the same graph as we build it out. And you can see the dependency tree for uh, the different package manager files and packages. So here I have got this package, I can expand it and I can see all the dependencies of the dependencies, as well as the details and errors for that package. Um, from here, you can also generate an SBOM. And so I could take that front end and I can generate an SBOM in either Cyclone DX or CSV. And I can choose the different material types that I wanna include in the, uh, in the SBOM. And downloading that will give me an XML in this case for Cyclone DX of my different material types. Now, once you have all those findings, that's up to the pull request and CI CD pipeline, and it's blocked it, uh, blocked all the vulnerabilities, but let's say some get through or new ones are introduced. That's when you can head over to our registry scanning. And you can see that same that same image from the registry where we'll continuously scan the registry for vulnerabilities. And so you can see all the same, all the vulnerabilities that were found in the in the image that's stored in the registry. Now, once your image is built and fully um, operationalized uh, and ready to be deployed. That's when you need an infrastructure as code template to, uh, to uh, actually bring in the container image into your runtime environment. So coming back to the developer, if I'm in uh, the, if I open up an infrastructure as code template that pulls the image, this is where we will scan not only the infrastructure as code for misconfigurations, we'll also find the vulnerabilities that were introduced in the container that was pulled in. So I have all those vulnerabilities that were found in this image. And then continuing down through the life cycle, once that's built out uh, and your container image is ready to be deployed, you've deployed the infrastructure as code, at runtime, we find those, we'll continuously scan running containers for those same issues. So you can see here's that same front end, got those vulnerabilities here. I can find all those same vulnerabilities and I can take that information and bring it to the developers to get it fixed. But now I have that visibility at runtime all the way through, all the way back through the developer life, development life cycle. And then finally, with our uh, Runtime. If you have defenders deployed, you're able to run. You're able to have that runtime protection. And so, if you have an unpatched vulnerability, or if there's a zero day, we have both the defenders' uh, runtime capabilities, where we can detect and block anomalous process file 
access and network behavior, as well as our WAS uh, additional capability that will act as um, a web app and API security layer to prevent any anomalous or known bad like OWASP top 10 attacks on that uh, container or virtual machine application. And that's our SCA capabilities in a nutshell. Uh, thanks so much for watching.